Hello guys and welcome back to my channel Civil Construction and Tutor and in this video I will show you how to design a RCC strap footing using this excel sheet manually. I have already uploaded a full video regarding this RCC strap footing for the theoretical part you can check there. I will provide the link in the description box and for this excel sheet you can find the link in the description box and click on that link and request for the access. For this excel sheet we have to input values for the yellow cells only. So model nodes. So you can get this from the e-tabs so basically which node you are going to design for so let us go to the base and here you can see so for our case this side of the property is flush to the adjacent property so we cannot provide any uh, offset for the footing so we have to provide eccentric footing in this side and we will have a concentric footing in this region and we will connect this with a strap beam so we have to select the most critical one and we'll design as per the uh, most critical case so for now let us select a and b and that will be the case a2 b2 or a3 b3 anything depending upon the load so i have prepared a load combination that is reaction it is basically a combination of the dead load and live load only without any scale factor and neither any lateral force so i'll just take fz so here you can see 331 607 500 and these are the unfactored load so for now the most critical one is this so i'll select this one that is a2 b2 so a2 b2 you have just write it down and grade of concrete so for now let us take 20 mpa that is m20 grade of concrete grade of steel 500 allowable bearing at site so for now it is 130 so it is also 130 size of the columns so here you can see this is the column and for now it is 0 0.35 that is 14 inches column center to center spacing between column 1 and 2 so this is the column 1 this is the column 2 similarly this will be the footing 1 this will be the footing 2 the A's footing or A's column is represented as 1 so for now it is 0 0.35 that is the column size center to center distance so from the center of this column to this center of this column you can get this from the E tabs or even from the architect drawing so it is 3.96 3.96 and load on the edge column p1 load on the center column so you can get this from e tabs as well 331 and 607 331 and 607 kilonewton and these are the service load that is unfactored total column load total area footing required so this will be from the total load and the allowable bearing with 1.1 as the self weight of footing that is 10 percent as the self weight of footing now cg of load from the edge of column 1 so this is also computed as per the formula or we can simply understand the concept from the video i have already uploaded for now i am just showing how to use this excel sheet so adopt with a footing so for now we will just initially guess the size of the footing that is the width so in this direction so for now let us assume 1.9 and that gives the total length of footing required as 4.18 on the basis of this footing and provide l1 is as 1.83 provide l2 center 2.34 so we can simply just increase the width of the footing for now let us keep as 2 so this comes as 2.26 2.1 2.15 so 2.15 as the width of the footing and simultaneously we get the size of the uh, length of the footing at is as 1.55 and 2.14 for the central footing and we also have as the conversion in the feet that is 7 feet as the width and 5 feet and 7 feet with uh, length of the footing respectively for the edge and the coal, uh, central footing so from this we get the dimension now let us design the footing slab that is the thickness of the footing slab so factor upward reaction this is simply from the total loads and the area of the footing required and width of the footings provided so we get so factored upward reaction is 381.14 kN per meter. So we will be designing the footing for this side that is along the width. So length of cantilever footing 0 0.9 in this direction. And maximum bending moment is also computed by using these two terms. And we will get 154.36 that is for the cantilever that is WL square by 2. Similarly we will get the maximum shear force required. And we will compute the depth of slab required as per bending moment and shear force and we'll take the maximum one so for this 
bending moment it comes as 240.89 and for the shear force it comes as 273.79 so we'll be adopting a value greater than this so for now let us take the value as 400 so we have to input this that is the overall depth these are the effective depth so overall depth is provided as 400 or we can also go for 350 and provide d that is the effective depth comes as 294 so 350 minus clear cover as 50 minus size of the bar provided divided by 2 so for now we are providing 12 mm bar as the initial so for now it is 294 so it is also okay now size of the bar so for now we are providing this as 12 so simply put 12 and use 12 mm bar at 150 so this is the spacing and we will check if it is sufficient or not so percentage of steel this is computed on the basis of this area of reinforcement provided and the depth of the footing so 0.29 percent shear strength of the concrete tau c so 0.39 so i have used this formula basically from sp16 so we get the shear strength of concrete for this percentage of reinforcement and greater concrete as m20 0.39 and newton per mm square and nominal shear stress comes from the shear force and the area of the footing so we get this as 0.365 so shear strength of concrete is greater than that of the nominal shear stress so it is safe that is this footing slab is safe against bending and shear now let us design the beam so firstly it is designed for the upward reaction that is so this comes as 355.3 hugging moment so this is wl square by 20 and width of the beam so generally this is provided equal to the width of the column in general practice if the width of the column is about 12 inches 14 inches so for now let us keep this equal to the width of the column so that is 350 mm required depth of beam 547 so this is simply from the uh, 0.133 fck bd square as we have the moment so we get the depth of the beam required and provided depth of beam so for now let us adopt a beam size that is greater than this so that is 600 so we get uh, depth of beam that is the effective depth of the beam as 560 mm which is greater than that of the required so it is also okay so area of steel required so you can find this formula in the annex that is 0.87 fy something like that so for this now we will arrange the number of the bars so simply here i have arranged three types of bar and accordingly we will provide the number of the bar and we will get a conclusion over here so to satisfy this reinforcement what we can do is we can provide a number of 20 mm bars a number of 16 mm bars and 2 mm number bar that is a combination of these three or we can also provide a 25 mm here and this as 20 and this as 16 and accordingly we will provide the number so for now let us provide this as 2 this as 2 and this as 2 now here you can see provide two numbers of 20 mm 25 mm bar 220 and 216 mm as the longitudinal reinforcement so accordingly we will get the conclusion over here if we put here 20 then you will get 20 16 and 12 accordingly with the number you have provided over here so for now let us provide this as 2 4 this as 2 and this as 0 so we get 1658.76 mm square so this is greater than that of the required one so it is okay similarly we will also get sagging moment and this is wl square by 24 and we get the area of steel required as 110.24 based on this moment so for this area of steel again we have to provide number of bars so simply we can provide four number of this and zero and two number of 12 mm bar so we'll get four number of 20 mm bar and two numbers of 12 mm bar as the longitudinal reinforcement at bottom so hugging moment this is provided at the top and this is provided at the bottom now for shear reinforcement we'll just consider uh, nominal reinforcement and this is as per clause is 456 2000 so considering vertical steel ups of 10 mm number of legs 2 then the area of vertical reinforcement that is 157.08 considering 10 mm and 2 legged required spacing so from this formula providing the value of asb fy b will get the value of sv so this comes as 171 mm so provided spacing of shear reinforcement 150 mm so that will be safe and at the end we have summary that is the footing slab i have uh, round up the value so 1.55 
from here similarly 2.14 as the central and this is the width and thickness as 350 mm so finally strap beam we have provided width as 350 depth as 600 and this is the summary of reinforcement and finally shear reinforcement so in this way we can design the strap footing manually using this simple excel sheet so uh, now we have to put this in the report so simply click over here and this whole data will be copied and just go to the report file and in the design of footing here sample design of strap footing i will just paste it over here and we'll adjust auto fit contents so the report for the design of the footing is prepared so i hope this video helped you and if it did help like and comment in the video and share with your friends and if you want this exercise just request the access from the link in the description box thank you